Hello guys, welcome back to the 29th part of the Kotlin UB2 Pro series. In the last part, we created our very own custom filter function for list of shapes, which is able to filter a list of shapes. And in our example here, we only wanted to keep those shapes in the list that have an area greater than 20. This video will be about generics, which is a really big topic. You could write entire books about that. However, I will keep it very basic and tell you everything you need to know in everyday life of a programmer. And actually, we often used generics before, but we never really thought about them. So, what are generics? Generics are basically just type parameters. So, we can pass the type of an object to a function or to a class. And that's actually the same we did below here. We had to tell the list what kind of objects um, we want to put into it. So we had to tell it that we have, want to have a list of shapes. And depending on which type we insert in those angle brackets, um, we want to have the same type of that for our filter function, for our returned list, and for our result list here. So we want to have a, a more general implementation now of our custom filter function because now that custom filter function is only applicable to lists of shapes and the real filter function from the Kotlin standard library is applicable to every kind of list. So just to demonstrate you that, let's create a list of integers for example like we had it before var integers is equal to list of, no, let's create a range here from 1 to 10 and convert it to a list. And you can see we can apply that filter function on that list of integers, but if we write custom filter, that doesn't work because integers is a list of integers and not a list of shapes. So we only extended the type list of shape, but we actually want to extend lists of all kinds of items. So how are we going to achieve that we can call that custom filter function on any kind of list. To do that, we need to jump right after that function keyword and here we need to pass our generic type parameter. So we don't pass that parameter in the standard parameter list here, like we do it for other parameters. Instead, we go after the function keyword, write two angle brackets and a capital T in it. That T is basically just the naming convention for generic types. You could also call that like a V or an E or whatever. I call it like a T here. And that T means that we can pass any type to that function. And we don't know the type of that function yet. So we don't know that this T will be a shape here because we will call that function on a shapes list. Or in that case, we want to call it on a list of integers. And in that case, that T will be integer. But currently, we only defined that generic parameter t to actually implement that function in a way that we can call it with lists of every kind of um, object. We have to take that parameter t and pass it everywhere where the name shape occurs. So let's write a list of t. The filter function will be a t to a boolean the return list will also be a list of t and our result list will also be a list of t. Also, I want to rename that shape here because we don't know that those are shapes, those are just general items because we can call that filter function now on each kind of list. So to actually rename a value and to rename it everywhere, there's a really cool um, shortcut in IntelliJ and also in Android Studio. That's probably my most used shortcut or one of the most used. So you go on that, make sure you select that shape. The cursor is on the shape and you press Shift and F6. And then you can rename that um, variable. I'll rename it to item and then you press Enter. And as you can see, IntelliJ renamed it everywhere where the name occurs. So let's try to understand what our custom filter function does here. So we created a generic type T here. And that is exactly the type that the type of items 
that are inside of the list we call the function on. So in case of our shapes list, that is just t is just shape because shape is the type of items we have in our shapes list. We only have shapes inside of that. And then we have to of course um, use that type in the filter function because before that we had um, a filter function from shape to boolean but that only applies to filtering out shapes and we want to filter out everything so we have to type uh, we have to write that generic type t here to filter out exactly that type that we passed as a generic type parameter and the result list the returned list here will of course also be of type t and the result list here too so t is here just a placeholder for basically any type and if we go up here to our var integers where we wanted to call that custom list uh, custom filter function on our list that didn't work but if we now write that again you see that we can call that function on our list of integers and in that case our filter function here that we have to pass takes an integer to a boolean and when we take a look inside of our shapes here inside of the custom filter function of our shapes and press control p then you can see in this case this filter function takes a shape to a boolean so that is exactly what that t does here because our shapes is a list of shapes so that filter function will be from shape to boolean and at that example our list is a list of integers so our filter function will take an integer as a parameter instead so here we can just write something like it is greater than 5 so only keep those items in the list that are greater than 5 and here I want to just take the area again so currently with just that type parameter t here we can call that custom filter function on any kind of list but with generics we have the possibility to restrict that type so that we only that we are only able to call that custom filter function on lists of a specific type so we can say go after that t here and write a colon after that we can say that we only want to be able to pass numbers as t and number is basically the superclass of all the um, number values like double float integer and as you can see now has now t has to be a number and our shape um, is not a number so we cannot call that custom filter function anymore on our list of shapes but we can call it on a list of integers because integer is a subclass of the number class so instead we could also just write t has to be a shape then we can call that function on our shapes list but not on our integer list because t has to be a rectangle triangle or circle here however for now i want to remove that again so we can call that function on any list and what i want to show you now are generic classes so we can also create classes with generic type parameters and in that example I want to show you how to actually pass several type parameters so the Kotlin standard library has a class that is called triple so it's written like that it just has three generic type parameters a b and c here so we have to pass three types now so for example integer string and boolean and I'll save that in a variable route triple is equal to triple and call the constructor on that and now you can see it requires exactly those types of parameters that we passed here so the first parameter has to be of type integer the second one of type string and the third one of type boolean so let's insert some random values here and in that case you, you can see that the generic parameters here are um, in gray that means they are redundant because IntelliJ is intelligent enough to um, to detect what kind of parameters we passed here 
and then it knows that ah this is an this is an integer this is a string this is a boolean so we don't need to um, explicitly say that the first one is an integer the second one is string and the third one a boolean however if we do that that's perfectly fine too so that triple class does nothing more than just saving three values of any type we want so after that we could call triple dot first second or third and you can see the first one returns an integer here the second one a string and the third one a boolean and i want to create our custom triple class to show you how we would implement such a class with several generic type parameters and to do that i right click on our src folder again click on new and Kotlin file or class. Make sure to select class here and I'll call it custom triple and press enter. All right, when we want to create um, generic classes, then we have to pass the generic type parameters right after the class name. So we have to make angle brackets again. And now we want to um, name our generic type parameters. In our example, we want to have exactly three and I'll name them ABC. So just separate them with commas, A, B, and C. And just as usual, um, we need to define the primary constructor after the class name. So in that case, our custom triple class will um, take three parameters. The first one has to be of type A, the second one has to be of type B, and the third one of type C. So let's create a variable first make a colon after that and that first is of type A. The second one is of type B and the third one is of type C. And inside of the class body I want to write a function that just prints all the three types of our values first, second and third. So let's write fun print types and that should print a line the type of first is and now I want to show you how to actually um, get the type of a, a specific variable for that um, we have to write that dollar again and curly brackets and inside of those we write oh, come on go away <laughs> um, we write first and then a double colon and then class only class here and as you can see, IntelliJ underlines the first here in red and it says that first should be non-nullable. So there is a possibility that we pass an, a type for A that is nullable and we cannot call the, this um, double colon and class on, the, on a nullable type. And to prevent that, we have to go up here and only allow objects of type any and as you know any can be anything in Kotlin but with that we restrict that we can have nullable types because nullable types are written in that object and question mark notation so in that case we would only allow nullable types of any so just nullable objects because because every object inherits from any and we don't want that so just remove that question mark again and also write that for the other types b inherits from any and c also inherits from any and go back to our print types function i click just into the line and press ctrl d to duplicate that line two times and replace that with second that with second and this one with third Oops. All right, fine. Now we can go back to our tutorials.kt file and create our custom triple. Var custom triple. And that is a custom triple. And now we can pass, if you uh, press Ctrl um, P here, then you can see we can pass three types here. So let's also write integer, string, and boolean. And inside of the constructor, it expects us now to pass an integer for the first, a string for the second, and a boolean for the third. So I just pass the exact same parameters here. 
And when I want to print that, uh, those types of parameters now, I write custom triple dot print types, or just create a function. And now we can run the program. And as you can see, it prints the three types of our values we pass to the custom triple. The first, uh, the type of first is class cotton.int. The type of second is cotton.string and cotton.boolean here. So our custom triple class just works fine. So yeah, as I said, this video should just give you a general overview of generics. You rarely have to make that crazy generic implementations by your own where you have several generic type parameters inside of a function or a class. So you don't really have to understand that in complete detail. But what is really important is that you understand the concept of generics. So if you see, um, for example, a generic function from the Kotlin standard library, that you understand what that function wants from you and how that signature looks like. So that notation with the T here or any other type parameter name, and that you just understand what um, the program wants from you. However, there can also be many difficulties with generics. I will show you one of those um, when I explain the homework of the last video where you should create that sum by function that takes a list of numbers and sums those numbers up by a rule that can be passed as a lambda function. Um, that can be really difficult to do with generics. So yeah, that's the solution to the homework of the last video. You should create a custom sum function that takes that is um, an extension function of lists of integers. So we hadn't discussed generics in the last video, so just um, use it for lists of integers. And that custom sum function takes a sum function as a parameter that takes as a parameter an integer and returns a boolean. So that we can pass a function that um, where we can only um, sum up those values who apply to that sum function. So only those values where that sum function returns true for. And that custom sum function, of course, returns an integer because the sum is an integer. And inside of the function body, we first set that initial sum to zero, loop through every item and check for each item if that sum function is true. And if it is, we want to add that item to our sum. So it's very similar to our custom filter function here, only except that line here. And the problem where we can't make that custom sum function that easy with generics is when I write that type variable t here, and in that case, we only want this to be applicable to um, numbers because we only want to be able to sum up numbers. So let's inherit that t from number and pass that t here for the list, here for the type of the parameter of the sum function and of course for the result type 2. And the problem with this is that we don't know how to initialize the sum now because now we initialize it, initialized it as an integer because we just set it to 0. If t is a double now then we would have to initialize that sum to 0.0. .0. If it was a float we would have to write 0f. So that is a real problem that we don't know um, the type of the generic parameter t. So actually we would have to check um, what kind of class that t belongs to and according to that set our sum accordingly. But this is nothing I want to show you in this video. Instead I just want to revert the changes here. I have a list of type integer and insert that integer for each t again and that function just works fine now. So yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope it was helpful for you. If so, please leave a like and comment below. Also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking me in the comments so I can answer your questions. And yeah, have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.